Welcome back to Big Dan's Air Gun Reviews. Now, the caliber debate. This has been raging on throughout the UK and the rest of the world for absolutely years. And that is, which is the better caliber? At least with our power limits, 177 or 22. Now, the 177 guys like to say that their pellet is the fastest, therefore you need less holdover, so it is therefore better. The 22 guys say, yeah, but ours is bigger, therefore you get more of a thwack with it. Now the 177 boys call the 22 guys Neanderthals, and the other way around, the 22 boys call the 177 boys fairies, or call it lady calibre. But I'm here to say you're both wrong, because if that's the gentleman's calibre, and that's the marksman's calibre, allow me to introduce you to God. Today, guys, girls, and those out there that weigh and wash their pellets, we're going to take a look at the 25 calibre Hatsan Striker. Now, I'm really looking forward to this. We're going to have a bit of fun. I believe it's the first 2.5 we we've had on this channel. And as always, we're going to break the rifle down, have a look at its features, see how well it groups, and in general, have a damn good bit of fun with it. And we're going to be doing some plinking with this as well, because, I mean, bloody hell, it's a 2.5. It's the best plinking caliber on the planet. As someone who's played with this gun for a couple of days now, hands down, without question, 2.5 is, I genuinely think, the most fun caliber, even in sub-12, than 177 or 22. I don't care what anyone says. But with that out of the way, let's move on to the review and see just what you get on your Hat Sand Striker. Okay, so features. What do you get with your Striker? Well, as expected, you've got a rather nice rubber recoil pad on the rear. One thing I will mention is the rifle is ambidextrous, at least in its synthetic form. You can get these in wood as well. So lefties and righties rejoice. Everyone can enjoy this gun. Slightly further up, you have got a rubberized sort of insert here to give you slightly greater feel when shouldering the gun, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. You've got an automatic safety at the rear as well. Again, more of a handling thing. And you have got an anti-creep mount built into the dovetail rail, as you can see there, which is you put your rear mount against that of your scope and it will stop it from sliding back under recoil and such like that. So nice idea, very well thought out. You get a two-stage adjustable trigger. Again, that's a handling thing. We'll talk a little bit more about that when the time comes. And on the forestock, you've got another rubber insert. Slightly further up, we have a full set of fiber optic sights. As you can see there, you've got green on the back and red on the front end. And one thing I will say is, although we don't usually like globs of plastic on the end of the barrel with these things, Hatsan have actually done it a semi-sensible way. At the end of the day, you have got to get that foresight on the gun. And unless you're doing it the Cometa way, or maybe the German way, you've got a piece of metal on the front, or Cometa do it quite um, uniquely with the silencer, where it's got a metal silencer and a, a, a small blade or fin poking up with the front on the front end, which is the fiber optic insert. These guys have done it the plastic way, but they've done it sensibly. If you look, it's quite narrow. It's not too in your face. And in general, I actually quite like that. That's not too bad at all. So they're the features that you get with your striker. So is it any good? Well, before we go there, let's see if our scales want to cooperate because they've been misbehaving slightly. And let's see just how heavy it is. So let's chuck it on there and then put it to the shoulder and see what we think. Okay, so she's on the scales and comes out at 6.42 pounds. So it's not a heavy gun at all. Right then, so let's put it in the shoulder and see how it feels there. Okay, so handling, what do we think of the Hatsan Striker? Well, first things first, as I'm sure you can probably guess, the gun is pretty much a featherweight. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not the biggest scope we got on there. It's a Konus Pro 3 number 32 AO, but even so, and I think it does sit on there really quite nicely as well. It's almost made for that gun. Um, but overall, it's light as a feather. This is the, the one hand Shake test, don't take that out of context, please. Um, it's all rumors, I'm sure, I swear to you. No, uh, but overall, it's a really nice and lightweight gun. Balance-wise, I mean, it's pretty much, if I could sort of do this here for us now, hang on. It's pretty much dead centering, so it's coming back a bit now. Now it's tipping. So yeah, it's just in front, there you go, spot on. Almost dead center of the rifle, just in front of the front scope mount, as you can see there. But no one's going to really have any troubles shouldering one of these. It is a lovely light bit of kit. We've got to be a little bit kind of gentle on the um, stock, shall we say. Obviously, considering the um, 12 feet pound power limits we have in the UK, obviously, and this being a 2.5, it's mainly going to be a ratting gun and things like that. There is a wood stock option for the striker, but the one we've got, as you can tell, is synthetic. And honestly, most of these are going to probably be sold, as we said, as ratting guns and things like that. And the synthetic is probably the option I'd go for. Don't get me wrong, Hatsan do make nice bits of wood. 
but this is going to be left knocking around like we said shooting rats in old barns and things like that and to be fair i mean you're not going to worry about this stock really too much at all if it gets a little mark on it well it gets a mark on it simple as now it does have these rubber inserts in the stock and don't get me wrong they aren't like some of the the checkering we've seen on some of the Chinese rifles we've done the reviews on and things like that where you can see it but you can't touch it or the strip of rules as we like to say on this channel this is the opposite you can touch it and you can certainly feel it and it is tacky the negative to that is boy is it tacky this is a personal preference thing of course there's guys out there I'm sure probably love the design of this gun I just wish they'd done that a little bit differently yes it does give you grip and yes it's not the most expensive gun in the world and it, it is a gun where it's it's um function over form but at the same time i wish they could have done that a little bit better i do think that just makes it look a little bit like a i don't know like an action man toy or something like that just just maybe you've just refined it slightly but now let's talk about uh the fun stuff cocking effort recoil all that sort of stuff so cocking effort there is nothing there at all as you saw there the other thing i'm going to show you is the lovely lockup this gun has. So, so there you are there, and then clunk, she's locked in. That is not going to give up, give up on you anytime soon. So, safety-wise, you have got, as you saw in the feature section, this really lovely push-button automatic safety at the rear. Yeah, I know there's naysayers out there. I don't like automatic safeties on my guns. Trust me, this might change your mind because it is so quick and easy. It's the same as what you'll see on the, the, the Webley Eclipse we did the review on, and also the Cometas all have this design safety. And simply, you cock the gun, safety comes on, when you want to disengage, it's just, and that's it. It's not a fiddly thing like the Crowls, where you've got something on the side, or even the Reximex, we've got a button you've got to push and put your hand around and all this sort of stuff. It's literally push forwards, you're ready to go. If you want to put it back on, just pull it back like that. Now. I will say the safety is plastic, but considering again the price of the gun, can we be too mean about that? Well, that's up for you guys and girls at home to decide. But let's give that a go. So trigger, nice and light first stage. A second. Creep, creep. Then she finally goes. There's a bit of creep. It's almost like three stages of creep. It was like bump bump and it's got a little bit of movement then bang this it is a two-stage adjustable unit so you can definitely tweak that a little bit will it ever be as good as a record trigger from Virarc? no i'm willing to bet that no probably not and there is a plastic trigger blade and such on there as well but again it's not a 400 pound gun so we can probably give it a little bit of leeway a bit of forgiveness for that let's give that one more go just see if it's the same so it creeped on us three times just then do one more go, pop that in. Oh, that's nice. Give that another go. So, I don't know, will we be able to do it little finger? Let's find out. So nice and light. And we've got stage one. One, two, if you can see that there. Cool. Yeah, you can just about do it with little finger, but that was starting to get a little bit achy there at the end. But you could see there the bump, 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 and then it finally shot. The other thing I'm going to say is it is definitely a twanger, if you could hear that bonk when you pulled the trigger. Again, not a massively pricey gun and spring guns. I mean, it, sometimes it doesn't matter what you spend. You can get, and I think we've mentioned it on the channel before, or we've had it on the channel before. You can have a five, or not five, but 400 odd pound fire arc rifle, and you will get a bit of a bonk when you pull the trigger. It's a springer. It's a twangy springer. But at the same time, it's, I mean, trigger wise, it's not even that bad, to be fair. It's pretty consistent in the way it creeps. I know that sounds like marketing speak. I don't even stock these, but yeah, it's a little bit of creep there. You can probably adjust that, make that a bit better. But overall, I mean, for a ratting gun and things like that, I think it's pretty good. Recoil wise, it's not bad. It's maybe not quite as tame. Let's just have one more, one more go. It's maybe not quite as tame as what I was hoping it would perhaps be, but we've definitely had worse. So let's just take aim at something. If you can, have a look at that front end. It's quite sharp, but there's not a huge amount of it. But again, we're going to have a little bit of fun later on and maybe see how that might affect things with this. But overall, it's not a bad gun. It's very much, I think it's going to be a Marmite bit of kit that you're either, people are either going to love it or they're going to look at it and go yuck sort of thing. But for its intended purpose, depending on how it does downrange, it could be pretty much perfect. 
but that's if it's got any consistency or power whatsoever. So let's whack the chronograph out and let's see what numbers we get from a 2.5. Okay, we are at the extremes of the lapel mics range at this moment in time. I have actually had to come forwards a tiny little bit, but first off, we're going to be using the hollow point pellets. We're going to aim at the target on the left and see what happens. I'm using open sights. I am not an open sight shot, so if we have a miss, I'm willing to admit that's 100% admit that's down to me. So let's have a bit of fun. So tin can on the left, it is your time to die, my friend. Not bad, too, not too much drama. Fairly typical of like a 177 or a 22 going through. Right, so now let's try lead free. Let's go for the boy in the middle. I am sorry, my friend, but your time on this earth is over. That's better, that had a bit more kick to it. Right, the last one. Uh, let's give lead another go, if we can. Pray that it doesn't blow over in the wind. At a tractor going by with an absolute ton of dung on the back. Be glad that you do not have smell of vision. Oh, missed. All right, let's go back to lead free now. Sorry, lead, you've had your chance. Let's go lead free. Let's have a go. So, uh, let's see if we can make him flip. <laughs> it does give it a hell of a smack, doesn't it? I hope that you can get that you're picking up the sound from way back here. Obviously, the mic's with me. I might reset them just so you can actually have a listen to it because the noise it makes when it hits them. Oh, hang on. One of them, if you can see that, is still slightly alive. Let's put another lead free in there and see if we can finish him off. Resistance is futile, my friend. <laughs> the dust that kicks up on the other side. Right, that's great fun. Let's go take a look at our uh, victims, <coughs> targets, and see how we did. And then uh, let's see what else we can find to shoot with the 2.5. This is a blast, this thing is. Okay, so we have our unfortunate victims in front of us. Not too much to talk about, really. I think we can tell which one the uh, lead free has killed because they make a very neat little hole pretty much dead center and you can see there look it's almost like uh it's like it almost missed but if you turn it this way you can see the exit wound coming through but yeah it creates a very neat little hole which is the downside for lead or lead free i should say pellets they don't mushroom as much you don't get quite as much energy in the target however what i will say the hollow points they're not expanding too much you can see it's marginally bigger 
than the lead free, the hole on there. So it's doing a little something as it goes down range, but it was a bit unfair on behalf of the hollow points because obviously this being quite soft really, to be fair, it can't really mushroom up the way it's supposed to. However, we have another unfortunate victim seems to have just stumbled across my path. Now this will be a different story. With this, we're gonna have first shot, I'll aim high-ish if I can up here. We'll go lead free first. And my prediction is it's going to pretty much go straight through, maybe similar to a, a 177 when you shoot a, uh, a water bottle. It will go in, go straight out the other side. Not too much fanfare. You'll just get a little bit of water pouring out and that's about it. However, after that, we're giving the H points a go because I'm thinking that, although still not obviously a solid target, it's not like going into flesh or anything like that, I think it is going to get that bit more energy in there and who knows. So we've got 177, anyone out there, well, most I think shooters have shot a water bottle before. You know what it does, straight in, straight out, not much fuss. Still fun, but not much fuss. Let's see what the 25 does. So let's put our victim back up. I'll reset the, uh, the camera and let's see how we get on. I'm having fun, can you tell? Okay, so as mentioned, the 177 usually is gonna pass straight through. Let's see what happens with the 25. I'm expecting great things, but you never know. So let's find out. So lead free first. You have served me well, water bottle, but I'm afraid your services are no longer required. Ooh, it's a hit, I think. From where I'm sitting, is there a very minor leak on the go? I'm not quite sure. So that was lead free. Not too much fanfare. We might end up a little disappointed actually. So now let's try, let's try lead. See what happens. Come on, H point. Time to redeem yourself, buddy. Okay, not like that, you don't. <laughs> Give that another go. So she's shooting left, we've found out. Oh, my lapel little receiver has just fallen off. Hopefully you can still hear me. Let's give it another go. <coughs> Excuse me, let's give it another go. <laughs> now you don't get that with your 177, do you? My God, even though I was choking on something just then, Oh, that's made it all worth it. Wow, that'll do. Let's, let's put just, if we can, let's put a lead three up, up the bum. There you go, didn't think you'd hear that on a review channel, did you? Let's put a lead three up the bum just to finish him off, if we can. Come on, Dan, open sights. <laughs> Wallop, let's go take a look. We have our latest victim. Yep, she's dead. Uh, I put it that way, she's definitely dead. The lead freeze performed pretty much as we expected. You can see the extra velocity that lead free in the 2.5 really gives it. It's punched clean through. Um, the lead pellet, however, as we predicted, was the one that definitely gave it the killing blow. I mean, she was still alive at that moment in time. It was leaking fluids everywhere. I mean, it's drying up now. You can see on the table, it's leaked a bit too. Um, but it was that that definitely knocked it flat on its back. The wallop. I hope it comes out on camera okay. I've got the mics on me. I should have put it up next to the bottle. That smack that you hear was just great fun. Um, then we put one more just to finish it off. Gave it a uh, lead-free enema and sent it straight through the bottom. And it almost actually came back out the top. Where is it? If you can just about make that out. See this little mark there, almost like a V-shape underneath the cap. It tried making it back through, but couldn't quite. And that is what you can hear or see in there now. So at the minute, I mean, lead free are doing incredibly well. And it's actually genuinely very accurate with lead free at this moment in time too. Well done to JSB with that one. Um, but it's pretty much dead. But we're pretty much now, I mean, I'm looking around seeing what else we can find as a target. I mean, that's well and truly, that's done. Um, oh, surely I couldn't. That's, I mean, I drink out of these. These are my good little metal bottles. Nah, it'd be stupid to shoot one of these.
Right, so it is absolutely dead. You can see it's been machine gunned on the back there. I think that's also an exit wound, but I'm not sure. Although it is going in, it might be an entry wound. That's definitely exit wound there. We've given it a belly button, as you can see. That definitely wasn't there before. And once again, it has a, uh, a bum hole, we'll call it. We put something new there as well. There you go, right where it should be. Um, there's also, which I'm quite happy about, and I think it was a lead free I did this with, which shows a very good sign, especially with the potential upcoming lead ban that gets put into legislation here in the UK. We did almost blow the cap off, and the thing was, I know it's gonna, you're going to expect me to say this, that was actually intentional as well. So it is an actual, other than obviously what we're doing here, messing around, it is a genuinely accurate little gun too. But there's definitely something in there, so let's pop that off. Have a closer look at that damage actually. Oh, look how that's dented, can you see that? <laughs> I do like let two five. All right, so look, we got two. So what do we have? Oops, dropped one of them. So the first one, this one's a lead free. Um, I was originally suspecting that both of these was going to be lead free. You can see that there's no real mushrooming going on at all. It's just gone straight in. And we have a hollow point as well, if you can see that there. So we had an RWS make it straight through too. There is a little bit of mushrooming going on. Hopefully you can see it's lost its shape ever so slightly. Obviously it's not that much. And to be honest, a 2.5 at the velocity that we have to use in sub 12, hollow points are not really gonna be your best bet anyway, because they're not going fast enough to really compress and put that energy into the target you're going to want to go for a regular dome to be fair in fact these could be pretty interesting to hunt with because it's a pretty big pellet as i'm sure you know a 2.5 but it's moving at near 2.2 speed so that could be really quite uh, an interesting choice but that's them done to be honest i'm actually not that upset about killing this bottle because if you have watched some of my earlier videos you do know that i have a second one so i am cheating you a little bit there we do have another one to shoot as well if i was to want to but i do favor putting water over having water sorry over fun it's the sensible thing to do it's about 30 degrees gotta stay hydrated dan Ladies, gentlemen, airsoft gunners, you join us upon our sacred battleground. The blood of our enemies still soaks within this soil, burning away in this hot August sun. However, ladies and gentlemen, we have been insulted as we have been met by the presence of these new interlopers threatening our very security. We have a pro shot tin, which has already been shot at, as you can see there, by a 177 pellet. Quite a good shot, actually, straight between the O and the S of Pro Shot, straight through the middle. Can't be having that, quite frankly. Girly calibre thing coming through here. And moving slightly further along, we have an FX tin with what would seem to be a very feminine looking 2 2 pellet hole going straight through there. Again, we are not having that. So we're going to annihilate all four of these with the 2 5 as quick as we possibly can just to show our out-and-out out superiority over the lesser calibers. Do you see the arrogance of these people? Do you see what they do? <laughs> My knights of the realm, let's get the 2.5 ready and let's show them what's what. That's it, I'm done. I'm never shooting another 2.5 spring gun on this channel ever again. I become a gigantic man-child. What little professionalism I had goes completely out of the window and I am not risking doing that ever again. I all of a sudden became, or had some sort of primal instinct in me tried coming out and basically all the serious testing we do goes straight out the window. Not doing that anymore, no, never again. That said, though, I did just have tremendous fun <laughs> out there, as I'm sure you can tell. Uh, it's just such a fun gun, it really is. I won't say much at the moment, because we'll go through to the final verdict. Uh, we did also actually do a little bit of semi-serious accuracy testing just then, too, because you might have remembered, before we uh, actually killed the pellet tins just a moment ago, we did say, we're going to see if we can make the, put bigger holes or put a bigger hole in that tin. Now, what I actually meant by that was I was going to try 
You can see where I've not quite got it right with the 177. I was going to try and make that pellet hole 25 size, so get the pellet going through there. And genuinely, considering it's open sights, we came bloody close. So I'll put it that way. I mean, look, look at the superiority. If I just cover up the 2-2 two, two, two section there, look at that. <laughs> that cannot fail. Whoa, there you go. That cannot fail to put a smile on your face. I don't care who you are, even if you're a PCP man. If you shot one of these, you'd fall in love with it straight away. It's just such a fun thing. But uh, accuracy testing, well, we'll say it can kill anything from full up bottles of water to tin cans. I mean, the bottle of water knocks straight on its ass, pardon my French. Um, but yeah, it's just such a fun gun. It really is. We need more two five spring guns on the market whether they're air arms or virac or whatever they are the uk needs more two five springers yes they're unless you put a lead free through it at which point it is a lot quicker than your standard two five yes it might be a bit slower than your regular two two pallet gun or 177 honestly i don't care this is just such a fun bit of kit i don't care at all and for close range pest control what a gun to have but that's it for our fun little accuracy testing segment over and done with apologies if maybe you're expecting us to do the um the proper test with the card and all that sort of crap we go over what which pellet worked best that was never going to happen as soon as i pulled the trigger and saw what it did down down range apologies for that if you want us to do a very serious test on the gun let me know in the comments we'll do another very quick video just to show what it can do on card but that's it for accuracy testing for now. We'll move on now to final verdict and see just what we think of the Hatsan Striker, but I think you can already tell where this is going. Hatsan Striker 2.5, what do we think? Well, you already know probably by my reaction earlier what I think of the gun, but we have to do a final verdict to give our honest opinion overall as a package what we think of it. Um, number one, Again, get the negatives out of the way first. Then there's one or two. Again, they're nitpicks probably more than anything else, but they're definitely worth mentioning. The rubber inserts on the rifle you can see there. Yes, they're designed to give more grip. Apologies, there's a large tractor going by. Probably with some fresh, juicy dung on there. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, the rubber inserts on there, I'm not the biggest fan of. It's a little tacky in the way that the, the overall execution's been finished off there. Bloody flies come along with that tractor, I reckon. Yeah, it just could have been maybe done a little bit more, made it a bit more refined, done it a bit more discreetly, perhaps. I mean, they do give traction, I will say that. You can feel it, it's nice and grippy to touch, but I think it slightly, I don't know, not cheapens the look of the rifle. It just looks a bit tacked on. I'm not the biggest fan of that. The other thing that um, is worth mentioning, the trigger is adjustable. It is an adjustable unit, but there is a little bit of creep in there. Um, out the box or in its current setting. I think we showed that off earlier. It is very consistent, as silly as that sounds, and the way that it creeps, you know when it's going to break, and it's not a terrible unit at all, but it's not like your record unit, and it's even the Cometa trigger, when you've actually adjusted that, that's a completely different unit to what you get on this. But again, the Striker's not a massively expensive gun, to give it a little bit of credit. Other than that, I mean, to be fair, there's not really a great deal negative I can say. I mean, I just, I've been smiling like a Cheshire cat throughout the entire video because it's a 2.5 brake barrel spring gun. And I'll tell you something else too. It's an accurate one. You'll notice we've got that scope box back here with us. And you remember we did say, obviously, we showed off the pellet tins. We was going to try and make those holes bigger. And we was pretty much on target. And that's with lead-free pellets as well. Well, with this, we can actually show it off better. We didn't actually put this up to the camera. Now, this one is 100% me. I wasn't even aiming over here. I just wanted to, if I could, put one through that barcode and we got close. What's impressive is the fact that you've got, I'm not sure if that's another one. We'll say three, so I'm not sure what that is. But you've got three pellets pretty much on top of each other there. If I put my index fingernail there, you can see what she's doing. And we had one up here. Again, could have been me. There's a little bit of gust, but nothing that's going to upset a 2.5. We'll put it that way. You can see there the damage on the side, which ripped clean through. Uh, but yeah, I mean, even here, they're not too massively far away. I mean, there's my, my thumbnail. And again, that was just me, as we said already, just rapid firing them pretty much as quick as we could just to kill those targets as quick as physically possible. Um, and overall power-wise, she is, as you can tell, absolutely, hopefully you can read that from there, she's spot on. Power genuinely sits at 12 feet pounds. I believe this is with the hollow point pellets, which are 25 grain. You can see 11.65, 11.95, and then pretty much where my finger is now, she goes on 12 and does not go above. As we go back, I'll just show you. If we go to, da, 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 
We then tried the lead freeze through it. Now the, through it, the lead freeze didn't quite give us the consistency. You can see there it's got a spread of 46, which is definitely up there for a 12 shot group. However, the main thing I'm showing off is actually the velocity. The top shot, which is um, 12th shot, which is 11.52 feet pounds, is 560 FPS. Now that's a big old pellet traveling at pretty much semi full power. In fact, I would say full power more or less. Uh, 2-2 pellet gun speed, so big old pellet moving at 2-2 speed. That's pretty good. If the, maybe the rifle could settle down a bit more with them. Well, you can see it's got the accuracy here. It might be one of the low shots maybe, or high shots that blew that one up and right. You don't know, but there's some very serious potential in this as well, not just as a plinker, but maybe as a sort of medium range target gun. Now, as we always say, who's gonna like the gun? Who's not gonna like the gun? Plinkers, you're going to absolutely love it. <laughs> you knew that was coming anyway. I mean, look, if I pan down, you can see, I mean, look at the mess that we made today, and that's not all of it either. Yeah, we've just annihilated everything. Things that didn't even mean originally to destroy, we've destroyed. Um, target shooters, uh, it's a 2.5 at the end of the day. So if you're going to be doing 50 yard target with it, obviously with our power level sub 12 across, across the pond, probably, absolutely you could. But here, I wouldn't recommend it because she's going to be coming down at, at long range. 25, 30 yards though, you want to blast some targets and see how you get on with it. Absolutely, and I think she'll surprise you as to what she can do. However, one of the strengths of this, and I think the two fives in general are unmatched for this, even with our power restrictions, 25 yard, 20 yard-ish ratting or rabbit shooting, unbeatable. The damage that you would do with one of these, there is no way that you're going to be getting anything scurry off unless you do a terrible shot to be brutally honest anything in the kill area with this it's not getting up simple as and that's even with the the lead freeze again with the velocity they've got it's just going to leave a big two five size, sized hole in the side of a rabbit's head it's not getting back up again it's just a great fun gun simple as there's no other way of describing it i'm smiling as i'm talking about it and again i'm not affiliated with hatsan in any way shape or form it's just it is what it is and as i've said earlier you need more 2.5 brake barrel springers in the market. Underlevers are okay. Um, we had a, a rather lovely chap called Brian come around here the other day with the Hatsan Dominator. The Dominator I weren't the biggest fan of. Felt a bit too much of a faff. With the 2.5, you want something you can break it, put a pellet in, and fire it more or less as quick as you can, and you want it on a reliable platform, which usually brake barrels pretty much are. Honestly, we need more of these. I mean, uh, even some of the cheaper Chinese gear, like SMK, I've said for ages, make a 2.5 XS19 or pest controller. What a tremendous little gun that would be for not a whole lot of money. But anyways, we're getting sidetracked now. Overall, would I recommend a Hatsan Striker? Yes, I bloody would. Even if you are a PCP shooter or you've only shot CO2, and hey, nothing wrong with CO2. I mean, play with one if you can. I'm willing to bet you would walk home with one. Simple as. But anyways, that's it for this review. We can't drag this on any longer. I'm sorry this took longer than what we was hoping for to get out. We did have camera problems. The battery swole up inside of the camera and that was a night nightmare to get out. So yeah, not a bit of a scary moment there, but we're up and running now. Our next review will be a Koozie K600. So don't worry, PCP crowd. We will be moving straight back on with the PCPs. And then we might actually do a couple other little Cometas that we missed as well. So. Stay tuned, we'll see what we've got coming. But thanks ever so much for watching and your patience for waiting for this one to come out. Mr. Richards, uh, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. I know it's been a long time coming, but this one's for you, buddy. And you're quite correct, I did thoroughly enjoy myself with this gun, 110%. So thanks ever so much for the recommendation. And we will see you all next time. Ladies, gentlemen, PCP shooters. Oh! Ladies, gentlemen, PCP shooters. You join us in our glorious battleground. The blood of our enemies is still upon the soil in this hot August sun. However, we have been...